my dear Father Augustine, my dear fathers, religious sisters, and special way, my dear young people here to begin this retreat. This retreat, a week with the Lord. My dear parents of our youth, fathers and mothers, and a few of you I delightfully met on the flight from Bombay to Cochin last evening, and many more I recognized as I entered the hall. And my all, my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. How fortunate we are to be able to spend these few days with the Lord. How fortunate to be able to put aside everything, all our cares, our worries, our responsibilities, and come here and sit like Mary at the foot of the Lord and listen to him as he speaks to us. How fortunate we are to have so many spirit-filled preachers to speak to us during this week. The readings of today seem most appropriate as we begin this retreat as an introduction to our entering into this week of prayer. We have come here to be guests of Moringur, of the Vincentian Fathers. We have come here to be guests of all the volunteers who will serve us. But how special it is when God comes as a guest. That is what happened in today's readings. What happened to Abraham, what happened to Mary and Martha. Abraham saw three men standing before him. Theologians tell us that this was a free prefigurement of the Trinity that Jesus was to reveal much, much later. But Abraham recognized them as special guests. Hurriedly, he brought water to wash their feet, as we heard. Hurriedly, he told his wife, Sarah, to prepare a special cake for them, as we heard. Hurriedly, he told his servants, prepare a meal for them, as we heard. And he himself brought milk and curds to go with the meal. The special guest came. And as they were departing, they gave him a gift. The fulfillment of his dreams of all his life. Even though he was much beyond his childbearing age, they told him his wife would bear a child. They had not seen his wife, whether she's young or old, sick or healthy, and yet with full confidence, they told them, your dreams will be fulfilled next year when we come to side. And in the gospel, we have Jesus on his way to Jerusalem, stopping at Bethany. Mary and Martha received him. And what did they receive in return? Peace, joy, the consolation which only God can give. They just, Mary just sat at his feet in silent adoration, silent contemplation, full of attention. Mary busied herself with the kitchen, with many things. And they hope both the lives of both of them, as Jesus entered their house as a guest, were totally transformed. That is what happens when God comes as a guest. For us, for five days now, as we spend these five days in a retreat, Jesus will come as a guest if you invite him, if you receive him, if you are open to him. Open your persons to him, your heart to him. Open your homes to him, even the homes may be far away from here, in India or abroad. Open your families to him. 
Open your places of work to him, your places of study to him. Ask him to come and stay with you. As Abraham did, served his special guests. As Mary did, as Martha did, serving him. And for these five days, spend them in prayer, reading scripture, listening to him, contemplating the life of Mary and the saints, continuously meditating on what you're told in the talks, and totally opening yourself to what God wants of you. Setting all your worries and anxieties aside, presenting them to the Lord, not just listening to him, but this is a moment for a two-way communication from Jesus to you and from you to Jesus. Pope Francis, recognizing the tremendous challenges that youth has in today, recognizing the importance of the youth for the world of today and the world of tomorrow, he called a synod of bishops in Rome to discuss youth discernment and their vocation. I was privileged to be attending the Synod and so I heard the cry of the youth which they made to the Holy Father and to the assembled bishops. They cried out asking the bishops and the Holy Father three things they wanted. First of all they said Listen to us. Then they said, trust us. And the third one was, accompany us. This was the call that we heard over and over again from the youth. Listen to us. Not just hear us. Give your full attention to what we are saying. I'm reminded of a case I had heard in Mumbai a girl was very depressed, was even contemplating suicide. And the counselor asked her what happened. And she said, I want to talk to my parents. I want to talk to my father. And every time I go and tell them that I want to talk to them, they give me a 500 rupee note, a 1,000 rupee note, and tell me, go for a movie, go have dinner with your friends. I don't want money. I don't want things. I want to talk to them. I want them to hear me. This was her anxiety, and because of this, she found her life meaning, meaningless. And perhaps this is a message to the parents here present, which our youth cried out to the church over and over again in Rome three years ago when we had the synod. Listen to us. They said, trust us. Trust us with important things. We can do things. Don't think that we are mere kids, children, unable to take responsibility. Give us, know that we can do things. I know that for parents, a child is always a child, whether it's 10 years, 30 years, or 50 years, is still that small baby who needs nurturing and caring. But society also must learn of our youth to be able to give them responsibility, to know that they are generous, authentic, wanting to transform the world, impatient, full of energy, enthusiasm. And so they cried out to us at the Synod, trust us. And the third one was, accompany us as it will hold our hands, walk with us as we take risks, as we sometimes make mistakes, correct us, be by our side, don't leave us alone, don't neglect us. So the call was always, listen to us, trust us, accompany us. I heard that over and over again from the delegations of youth that was present at the Synod. 
Pope Francis, in responding uh, to the youth, responding to the call of the youth uh, in, during the Synod, gave an apostolic exhortation, a letter. And the title of the letter, this letter, this message to the youth, is Christus Vivit, Christ is Alive. And that, I think, is the first message that each one of us should begin to take from today onwards, remind ourselves once again. Christ is alive. He's not some mere figure of the past 2,000 years ago, not an icon that we must imitate, not something who, somebody who's written the Gospels, about whom is written the Gospels, and who lived, suffered, died for us, Yes, and now is in heaven far away from us. Christ is alive and Christ is with us. Today, here, and these five days, I invite you, my sisters and brothers, my dear youth in particular, to, during these five days, to meet Jesus, to talk to Jesus, to hear him, to feel his presence. And as you go back from here, back to your homes, carry his presence with you, become totally transformed people. Christus vivit, Christ is alive. The Holy Father gives us four qualities which he says you should have, four aspects in their life. I want to share them with you. He says, that the youth should be energetic, transform the world, etc. The youth should dream dreams. And that's really, the, I think, what during this week you are invited to do. Youth who are alive. The Pope says, Christ is alive, he's with you, and therefore you are alive. If you are alive and you have the enthusiasm of youth and you have Jesus with you, Learn to dream dreams. Dreams of the future. Dreams of the present. Dreams for yourself. Dreams for others. Dreams of a better society. Dreams of a better India. Dreams of a better world. Dreams of what you can do for a better India, better society, a better world. Dream dreams. This is the time for you to dream dreams. And that is good. That's a sign that the Spirit is with you. A sign that Jesus is in your home, in your heart, in your person. And Jesus is guiding you that the Spirit is with you. Youth, Pope Francis says it also, builds up, this is the time when you build up relationships with friends, with companions, relationships for work, relationships for learning. Relationships, I would think, above all for us to become disciples of Jesus and to transform the world. Relationships to, in associations so that we can be true missionary disciples, as Pope Francis continuously asks people all baptized to be. Dream dreams of becoming a missionary disciple in your own place of work. Doesn't mean that you've got to leave your place of work, residence, and go out and preach to be in your own place, a missionary disciples, build relationships that you can network. It's so important. We can't, you can't be islands. We can't be islands. God has not meant us to be islands. We've got to be part of a group, part of society. And this is the time when in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, you are able to build relationships. Again, Pope Francis says, the third thing is, take challenges. Take risks. That is what youth always want to do. See the risks, see the challenges, go with your friends, Let's try new things, see how you could make Christ present in your society, in your group, and also outside. See how you could be a better person, a better disciple of Jesus. Youth, take risks take challenges, uh, see what the world has got to offer them 
I want to face the challenges. Youth are not afraid. And finally, Francis says, youth make choices. This is the time when you make choices. You make decisions about your vocation. You make decisions about your life. You make decisions about your profession. You make decisions about your friends. You make decisions about whom you'll associate with. Make decisions. For all this continuously, you need wisdom. You need grace. You need the Holy Spirit to be with you. My dear youth oh, here present, you are the present of the world. You are the future of the world. In your, in your hands lies the whole of society. But for this you need continuously Jesus to be with you, the Holy Spirit to be with you. I want to go back as I conclude to the gospel. Mary and Martha were there. Jesus entered their house. And we always, I also, always, when we hear this gospel, we think Mary did what was right, which is true. And Martha did what was wrong, which is true. But we think that Mary and Martha, their roles were totally, one was totally good, one was totally bad. Jesus does not say that what Martha did was wrong. He says, Mary has chosen the better path. You are worried about many things. That's what was said in the gospel. One thing is necessary to be a disciple of Jesus. One thing is necessary to live your baptismal consecration to the full. One thing is necessary to allow yourself to be possessed by the Spirit and to go and transform the world. Mary sat over there and just listened to Jesus. I think my sisters and brothers, my dear youth, these five days be like Mary. You are called to be like Mary in the gospel of today. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him in silent adoration, contemplation, worship, allowing what he says to bring in your life peace, joy, happiness, hope, discipleship of Jesus. And after being for five days like Mary, see what you are called to do. And then become Martha. Because then there is a need of also Martha. Imagine if both Martha and Mary were at the feet of Jesus. He would not get anything to eat. He would be very hungry. Jesus, of course, was not, would not be worried about it. But Martha's role also was helpful. She was serving. And therefore, after you have spent these five days in contemplation with the Lord. Examine and talk to the Lord. Ask him, now what do you want me to do? How do you want me to be the Martha of my life, of your life? How do you want me to serve? The two are not exclusive. Therefore, this week, become fully like Mary. And as you go back, Get also a little of the Martha effect in your life so that you go back and also are people of service. Every now and then, come back and become Mary so that you can become a good Martha. And every now and then, give up and become a good Mary. May Jesus be with you right through this week. God bless you. Pray for one another and pray for me.